I was just thinking, <clears throat> when you go to a puppet show, you see the puppets, you see the puppets and the marionettes, but you don't, if, if it's one of those shows where the puppeteer is out of sight, you don't see the puppeteer. And that's what the unconscious mind is, it's the puppeteer, and then what seems to be going on the surface of consciousness is the puppet show. And that's why it's so disturbing, because it can be like you watching the puppet show and going, I don't like that at all, what I'm seeing, I don't really like that. But you don't see the puppet master underneath, and so it seems even doubly scary, because you you can't seem to control it. And that's what's so good about this movie tonight is Simone, the whole movie shows that that something's made up and then it goes out of control, completely out of control. That this uh, character Simone seems to be generated and then is is more of a representation of Al Pacino's main character's thoughts. You know, he, he kind of makes her up and then, but she seems to take on a life of her own. And so basically the world has been given away. You could say that that's when you look at the world, it's what you gave away, tried to give away. There's a part really back at the back of the text where Jesus says, you've got like a two-tier self-concept going on. The dreams that you dream in secret, and the dreams that you gave away. Everything on the surface of consciousness is the dreams that have been given away. And then, that's just a mask covering over the dreams that you dream in secret, which are really dark. They're really black. They're, they're the death wish. That's why the top tier was made. That's why the whole top tier was made, because it didn't want to see what was, what lies beneath. Some of you might remember that there was a movie called What Lies Beneath, where Michelle Pfeiffer goes through the whole thing and all these, she's perceiving all these scary things happening, but she thinks she's got at least one alliance, one dear friend, her love, her life, her husband that she, and they cast Harrison Ford, which is perfect, because he's always the good guy. Yes, and it turns out, he's not. Mm. At the end, it's like that Angelina Jolie movie you were going to watch where the suspect finally yeah. comes out. But that's, that's really, so when, they're, when the mind is upset by what it's judging on in the forms, it's just, it's projecting and it's afraid of, of a world that's out of control now. And it's not really acknowledging what lies beneath, it's not really acknowledging the subconscious mind. Tonight's the last Republican debate, so this is the last time that Trump will be on stage. <laughs> he, he's having a field day with it down in Las Vegas of all places. Uh, the circus moves to Las Vegas, but, um, but, I, uh, I just saw a little clip online where uh, there was this award show or some kind of some honor show honoring somebody, and they this was Saturday Night Live. They got Tina Fey to come. Just said Lauren Green just said, "Come, just come, and we'll 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 have you do something." When she got there, they said, "No, we're not really going to have you. Just watch the show. Just sit in the audience and watch. The show. Nothing for you to do." So she sat down, and then she when she sat down, she looked right behind her and. Donald Trump was right behind her, and she just was like, because she just thought, she watches TV and she's always talking back to the TV like, just shut up and no, just leave the Mexicans alone, and you know, she's always really going at it. But then when she just sees behind, she's just like, oh hi there, you know, she squealed, she said, what a big hypocrite, she said, I, but then she thought, why do I, why do I, am I so cordial <laughs> when I'm blasting away at home? And it was this, it was a self-concept thing again. She said, we both had the same baby nurse, Donald Trump and her had the both the same baby nurse. And all she could think of is if I'm, 
if I get into a feud with Donald Trump, then the baby nurse will hate me. So it's this self-concept of concern. She can blast away, people do that all the time with the internet. They just blast all their comments, but if there's some kind of a threat to the self-concept, if they feel that it could show them in a bad light, then they kind of cower. So she was calling herself a hypocrite. But in this movie, uh, the main character, you know, he's a filmmaker, Victor Taransky, and he wants to get his film made, and um, his lead actress um, is, has a lot of preferences and a lot of whims and a lot of things, and basically, she basically walks out on him, so he wants to get his film made, but it's a whole, it's a whole movie that just shows the making of an image called a vector in this movie, a virtual actor. It's a computer-generated actor, and then what, making an image, and that's like the characters that we're perceiving in this world that seem to be real people. They're like vectors. They're like generated from the unconscious mind just to act out everything. <coughs> and they do a great job. They're just, they, they're following the script. They're doing everything they were programmed to do. They're saying everything. They're doing everything. They're feeling everything that they were programmed to do. But when you come to try to go to peace of mind and have integrity, then it's, it doesn't seem to work out very well as long as you believe the characters are real. If you see them as just thoughts, then you're more likely to just be able to let the thoughts go. But as long as they're external characters doing things to you, acting on you, acting, reacting, responding, with will of their own, with a mind of their own and whatever, then that's the state of sleep, where you seem to be at the mercy of external forces and external people. And it's very much like in Solaris, when they go to Solaris, because they're not whole people. They're just what you gave them. They're, all they are is, is how you remembered them in the unholy instant. They really have nothing, these figures don't have anything to do with the Christ. They have nothing to do with reality. In fact, Jesus calls them shadow figures. He actually calls people shadow figures. They're just acting out the past. Past hurts, past grievances, past wants, past desires. My friend Rusta got a song from the angels called Shadowland. And the angels, the chorus is where nothing lives and nothing dies. Where nothing is, there's only lies in Shadowland. So nothing lives, nothing dies, it's just the images, and it's, it's like a, just a, it's an unreal dance. It's not, a, it's not really there. That's the lesson I was reading today, after I read the text, this lesson 132, where Jesus comes right out and says, There is no world! Exclamation point. First, there is no world apart from what you wish. There is no world apart from ideas. And then, there is no world! Exclamation point. All of them are in that lesson 132. So, I think it's good that, actually this movie is one of the classics, I was telling Nikita, Nikita is going to familiarize herself with this, this one for teaching purposes, but it's, um, it's actually a classic because it has so, so much of the dynamics all in the movie and I would say it's, it's a comedy. It's, you know, it's this Pacino comedy. At its best, because he does a lot of movies where, like The Devil's Advocate, he played a, quite a devil, mm -hmm. and then The Scent of a Woman. And The Recruit. Oh, yeah. The Bad Guy. The Bad Guy. But in this, mm -hmm. it's, he's, he's playing a character who's kind of caught where something gets generated and then it goes completely out of, out of control. And then it goes all the way through to the healing, like Michael was sharing, that we're finding the fake bed, just don't lie about it. Like the Holy Spirit saying to the sleeping mind, I'm fine with fake, just don't lie about it, just don't keep it concealed. That's why we have our expression sessions, is not to conceal 
what was made. Because if you conceal it, you believe that it's true. That's why you conceal it. But if you're willing to expose it, then that means you're willing to be shown that it's not real. And that's the end of the guilt. So I think this, yeah, this movie is very appropriate. There, we really hadn't picked a movie for tonight, and then um, a friend of mine, Shia, who's a singer in New York City, sung at UN and all of a sudden, she sent me her version of Aretha Franklin's song, Natural Woman. So that's why we're watching the movie tonight. That was the clue from the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you make me feel like a natural woman. So that, you'll see how that gets used at the end too, that's hilarious. Uh, that's part of a concert that Simone does, who played in the film. With, uh, uh, it's amazing. Okay, I guess we'll just roll it. One of our classics. Even the angels in the beginning singing here. Your car will be ready in just a minute, Mr. Transky. We gave you a complimentary car wash. Oh, really? You have the cleaning agent now. Thank you. So you notice he keeps making adjustments. He He's not telling the truth, and then he he's talking to himself and justifying everything, and and now at the press, value her privacy, he speaks for her, and you know, just like we watched the Adjustment Bureau, now we're going to watch the, the guilt just go through all these adjustments to try to perpetuate the lie. And then you think of Resta's song, as if, as if there is no world. Some of you have heard that song, and Helena did a, a version of As If as well. But there's a line in there, no longer will I try adjusting to a lie. So every time there's struggle going on, psychologically, or there's guilt or whatever, the guilt's being kept in the unconscious mind, and then adjustments are being made, justifications, compromises. <laughs> the mind is so terrified of the love and the light that it believes that there's an out-of-control lie, and then there's been thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of lies on top of the lie, like in the layers of dreaming in Inception. Layer upon layer upon layer until you forget that you're dreaming and you need a giant wake-up call. Lie upon lie upon lie until you forget the original lie and then you go behind or underneath the original lie to find original innocence and in spirit and love. So we're, this is a classic movie because he's, he's making movies with this generated character, this image. That's what's happening with these characters. These are characters in a part of a movie. They're being used by the mind. And the reason the characters seem shaky is because the unconscious mind underneath it is shaky. And now we'll see, you know, you saw him running away from the, the press. The press is asking his questions, he's talking about privacy. And when he's even there talking to the computer, he he's drinking, he has his guilt, he's He's still perpetuating a lie, but he, he kind of likes the fame that goes along with it for Victor Taransky. So it's all this pride that's keeping up this game of adjustments. But it's going to get more and more hilarious. I've never seen a movie that, that shows the dynamics of what's going on in the mind, and then it just carries it out so extremely that you can see it in a humorous way, see what's going on. So watch how he tries to justify and make, uh, he tries to cover himself, which is really, that's what happens in this world when, when you try to cover, cover the guilt, and cover the guilt, and hide the guilt, and justify the guilt, and it gets into this cycle that seems to be out of control. We're going to see him acting it out for us on the big screen here, showing it to us. Notice how, how much he's trying to hide the fact. This is why we have our expressions. 
our expression sessions because, you know, there's enormous effort to hiding guilt, enormous effort to hiding secrets. The only way they're ever healed and shown to be nothing is exposed. So here we go, another round. Now, here comes his ex-wife and all the studio executives demanding, forcing their way into his little studio where he generates Simone. And he's just going to be forced again to either expose or come up with more ingenious ways to hide and protect. Product placement, it's image placement. The <laughs> ego is a genius at Mentioning. moving the images of it. Mm. You know, it's always trying to make things seem real that aren't real. Mm. And it's got to do that in order to protect itself from being exposed in the mind. So, so anything that makes the error real, makes the world seem real, is used by the ego. And it kind of, you could say it's very manipulative to protect itself from being uncovered. And there's a part of Victor, he's, a, he's acting out, representing this desire to be famous, to be known, to have attention, maybe wealth and all the things that go with the world. So he's, he's just acting it out. And even though, you know, he's famous um, for playing the devil's advocate, he played quite a devil. This is more of a subtle devil. Mm -hmm. That was more of an overt mm -hmm. devil. This is like, he, this movie is really showing how sneaky and subtle the devil is. Because he's always protecting mm -hmm. and protecting and overprotecting and justifying. And that's where it can, this kind of movie can really help you if you start to just take it in and go, wow, how am I trying to justify an identity in the world? How am I trying to be good? Even a spiritual identity, have a good spiritual identity. Please the people, please the characters, please the messengers, and to maintain a good identity. You see, that's part of the trick as well, where this is just saying, watch in your mind, in your thoughts, if you're ever justifying anything. Because he's acting it out in a very subtle way. So he's just, again, there was a big point where it could be exposed and he, you know, he says she's always in here and she's, she's a computer. You got that? <laughs> Far, and then he threw an addict. You see, the cover came in just with that word addict. As if she's a real person, still, and now she's an addicted person, agoraphobia, afraid of heights, afraid of germs. Just He just let them fill in the projection, mostly. He said, now you're getting it. Now you're, you see how the ego is so clever, it just, it uses all this evidence to keep it going. So here we go, it's just going to get better and better from here on in too, because he's, he's not even close to stopping with all these justifications and all these covers. Just showing the extent of the ego. It's kind of cool, David, isn't it? Because the original idea was to try and control the actors. <laughs> but yeah. he, it's already so out of control, there's no control. Yeah, yeah, his own wishes, his own unconscious wishes and desires have, have come out and now he hasn't quite, he's been a little bit afraid of the publicity, he's afraid of getting discovered, of people finding out what he's been up to, but it hasn't quite got out of control. It's just beginning to get out of control with all the crowds and adulation and people following, but it's going to explode, mm. which makes it even better to show how it's way out of control and there's no way to, Jesus says in the Rules for Decision, you have no control over the world you made. This is a great movie for that, for showing exactly what he means by that. Okay, here we go. Comedy Central.
<laughs> we appear to be having some satellite difficulties. <laughs> and, but before There's we always an explanation like, like in the Truman Show, explaining away. You know, in the Truman Show, when the, the light comes down and they say a plane was going by, shedding parts, you know, they're always justifying and ex explaining everything that happens in the Truman Show as if it's a real world, not just a set that's falling apart and that they're just actors. So now, insufficient memory, oh, we're having technical difficulties, you know. It's always the ego is pumping, pumping the mind to say, no, no, it's really, it's really happening. You're a real person. It's a real world. There's real snow out there. There's real cold. It's real, you know, everything's real, real, real to protect itself from being uncovered. We just saw, we saw Meryl Streep in The Giver do the hologram performance, and I said, get used to it. Well, here it comes again, the hologram performance, live at the Hollywood Bowl, for the whole universe to watch. This is PR. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just interesting, I'm just, uh, I'm just noticing like even inconsistencies, you're saying she's agoraphobic and all this stuff. And just like, he has to, yeah, it's very tiring, yeah, yeah. I'm just noticing that. Like, he's I always justifying, her. now he's going to have her go in front of millions and millions <laughs> of people, even though she, he says she is agoraphobic and she's afraid of, she's afraid of being with people, now she's <laughs> going to be out there, but he's always, it's a threat, they were saying, well, we'll take it to the, the press will take these photos, false photos. So you see, it's it, fear will just be do whatever it can to cover, without any kind of integrity or consistency. So now he's got her out. He's in his little sound booth. He's like the Wizard of Oz, you know, <laughs> pulling the the strings. You know, Toto has to pull the curtain and to expose the wizard. So he's been pretty ingenious at this point with not having the curtain pulled. Mm -hmm. But that's that's to come too. We'll see how that all goes. A lot of inconsistencies. <laughs> Split mind. <laughs> it's like the same thing all over again. Oh wow. Very profound. He's starting to get in touch with his own self-hatred and his own frustrations and his own inconsistencies. You know, Jesus says in the Course, you never hate your brother for his sins, but only for your own. So, he's not, not talking about personal, he's talking about the mind. The mind has is, is got a major split going on and it's got a major deception going on. It's trying to be something that God didn't create. So it's got a major authority problem, major hatred, and very intense in the mind. And now it's starting to play out more in his life where he's, he's starting to feel that he's not so attracted to what he's doing now. He's starting to see what he's been doing. And that's the hardest thing when the, when the defense mechanisms of the ego start to get exposed. They tend to get turned on into self-criticism and self-blame. Like, how could I be so stupid? How could I be so foolish to leave God and trick myself and to, keep and to continue to keep playing these games with my identity? The mind starts to turn like into it, like a self-hatred. But then even that, Jesus says, until you are willing to look upon the full extent of your own self-hatred, you will not be willing to let it go. So he's just getting closer now in the movie to the point where he started to get a little more willing to look at his own self-hatred. Because before he was just drinking and justifying and distracting. And now the game has gone on so long that it's like it's starting to get frustrated. He actually still loves his daughter and he still loves his wife, but he's kind of got caught up into this whole Simone thing and now his daughter's even 
reflecting it. I want the old Victor Tversky back. You know, now it used to be about the work, but now it's about her. So she's reflecting back that he's lost his he's lost his way, and uh, his wife wants him back, and he kind of wants her back, and so, but he's got this uh, hatred coming up. So we'll see what he tries to do with his hatred here. And I'm going to pause it here because he's. He's actually going to make his first attempt at, at exposing what's going on. But, if you put all this energy into fake and projections, how is it when you first try to tell your mother and your father or your daughter that you're the Christ? How does it go? <laughs> you see, the, the project, they don't believe you, the projections have been so heavily reinforced where you've been playing little, playing small, playing a fake ID, that now when you first start to expose what you've been doing, and you start to, to try to make an actual connection, <laughs> the projections are so thick that they, they doubt. They doubt that you're telling At the, the truth. <laughs> they doubt what? At the least. At the least, right. They doubt or they attack. Attack. <laughs> right? That's right. When you put all this energy into this, and you try to withdraw your mind from it and go reverse, if you've been going forward with the projection. So this is pretty good, because he's actually, he's starting to fall in love with, with Elaine, he wants to come clean, and he's going to try to come clean. I did this with my mother one time, and it went very similar to this. <laughs> so, <laughs> years ago, so you can watch. How it goes with Elaine here as he tries to spill the beans <laughs> and be authentic. In my church, I swear, I made some love. I made her. You made some love? Yes. Victor, she made you. <laughs> That's right out of the course. What you think you made, you believe has made you. But the mind makes the ego and then forgets. And then has a projected the world that's given away, in which you seem to be born to parents, in which the world, mom and dad, sperm and egg, make you. You see how it's all reversed. It seems like the projection made who you are, but all this stuff about making the ego and, and doing this whole shift of identity, forgetting your eternal reality and making up a false self, it's all happened in mind. That's been pushed out of awareness. That's in the unconscious mind. And then the story is mom and dad. Which country? United States, Russia. You know, everything is backwards. That's why Jesus said, Who is my father, mother, sister, brother? He that does the will of my father in heaven is my father, mother, sister, brother. He saw that the whole thing of linear time, of, of genetics, of generations, of everything. It's all part of a trick to protect the mind from knowing what it is. That the Greeks talked about, know thyself. It's an elaborate trick to guard against accepting yourself as spirit. It's a huge trick. And now he's just said, I made her. He's really making his confession and sharing his, his, his guilty secret. I made her. And she's going, Victor, she made you, but you were nothing without this actress. <laughs> you see how it's all flipped around, but these are, these are just acting out on the big screen some of the most basic core teachings of A Course in Miracles. And now he's going to start to get even more frustrated and angry because he's trying to make it, he's trying to come clean, but he's having great difficulty coming so clean, because he's convinced himself and everyone around him of the reality of Simone. And this is no different than the mind convincing itself of the reality of a person. And now it's got to go in the other direction. So it gets even funnier now. This is, it's now it's just beginning to warm up at this point. There's so much more to come. <laughs> Like many people, if they reach desperation, they turn to 
murder and death or suicide as the way out. Because he's reached his, his frustration point. He can't seem to kill her career. He can't seem to come out because he says, they're all, I've defrauded millions. So he's in a place of intense hatred and self-hatred and guilt. So now he kisses the, he literally kisses the gravestone. Not in other words. So he's now he's going to attempt the, the murder, um, suicide attempt. For in his case, uh, uh, murder. But this is just showing all the options. It's even this movie is even showing how murder and suicide is not an option. That's not going to get you out of the guilt either. So it's just showing everything. It's her body of work. <laughs> the two meeting points, the two thought systems, you can't explain, you can't explain this, you can only see it for yourself, like in the Matrix, I, I can only show you the door, I can't walk through it, you just have to just see this so bluntly and just walk right through it, because there's no way you know, to, con to describe it, explain it to the world. Because the world is the belief that there is no spirit. So you can't really convey it. You can just let it come through you and come through you and demonstrate it, but you can't really explain, explain it in words. Now he's, reach now he's really reaching his breaking point. Because <laughs> he's trying to become as clean as he can, and they're going, you're disposing of a body? <laughs> of a woman that doesn't exist. And, and the camera, they've got to stop free freeze frame of him dragging the, you know. <laughs> but this is where it gets really hilarious. <laughs> oh, this is so <laughs> the freeze frame of that face. Like, what do I do? What do I do? And look at the words underneath it. Why don't you just come clean, huh? That's great that we've got subtitles on. That right there is a poster. That's a quantum forgiveness poster right there. Why don't you just come clean, huh? And look at his face. The kid is saying, he's just like, what do I, what do I do? What do I? Sessions. We're fine with fake, just don't lie about it. That's what the spirits keep saying every day. We're fine with fake. In other words, we, we know it can't bind you forever, just don't cover it. Just don't bury it. You'll never be free of it if you keep burying it. So that's, that was like the, the line in the whole movie. In fact, you could stop the movie right there. <laughs> I've done that with certain movies that I remake, or just stop it. But that's really like the, the big people. But it's funny, they do have a funny ending. <laughs> so we'll watch the final few frames. It's truly in the, in the mind, it's like our presence is our is our life, and the rest just symbols that people may approach and go, oh look at this, I like this, and I like that, but then nothing is of what it seems. Yeah. We're totally digital. We've gone digital. Hmm. And 
says, I didn't know what was wrong with me, but there's nothing wrong. <laughs> hmm. That's why this is a classic, because it brings your mind back to that still point of realizing that the only guilt or shame or pain is still, is trying to maintain a lie. And this is just another permission saying, don't do that, you don't need to maintain an image, you don't need to maintain a facade or a mask or an act. I, I looked that up in the dictionary one time, to act is to impersonate, it said. There's no need to act. Very, very deep. It all works together for good. When there's no good movies at the theater that draw us, then we just draw upon the pool of the classics that mm -hmm. remind us of what it's all about. You know, it's like a mind rinse. Mm. Very profound. There's only one distinction, one tiny tweak in the mind that's required and and these movies are like, just boom, just bringing that in. Just everything's funneling to one point. It's great, I couldn't tell what the thoughts were, but I was feeling like, just amazing, I guess what the movie was just bringing forth, but this like unsettling fear, like, huh, like this shakiness, it's like I couldn't even like relate it to any thoughts, but it was just like this, oh, the movie was really like bringing it forth, <laughs> it was really good. Just felt like a rinse. <laughs> Yeah, it's whatever it takes for the mind to just snap, crackle, and pop, you know. <laughs> I, I was watching something on the, the news on my, my computer where Melanie Griffith, who's married to Antonio Banderas, mm -hmm. and she's like all people in the world getting, seemingly getting older and aging and wrinkling and everything, and, but these, the, the seeming critics have been so vicious about her looks and everything, just this and this and this, that she was on a beach in Hawaii and she just snapped a photo of her legs and posted it on Instagram. And then they started right away, ooh, ugly, are those men's <coughs> legs, you know, they started right in at it. But she, she just kind of, just like saying, well, okay, say whatever you want, like you could see that it, I could even see with her, with everyone, everyone's going to the same place of having to see the meaninglessness of beautiful, ugly, of, of, of form, of judging form positively or negatively, you know. What a beautiful case to be a, a, a Hollywood actress and then to go through the what seems to be the aging process and then have people before where they were complimenting now, criticizing and to start all of it just to see that none of it yeah. is real. How beautiful, you know, I just have such an appreciation for for the spirit just showing us that it's that you can't really judge the form positive or negative. It's so beautiful. And there's no there's no uh, sense of should or ought to or have to. Some some guy just wrote to me on Facebook 
couple hours ago, just going, David, I just don't get this non-duality stuff he wrote. I just can't get it. Should I, should I look for another path? And I just wrote back to him, I said, yeah, why don't you just go for anything that resonates with you. Love you. And he went, thanks. <laughs> like, you know, that's it. It's all that. Right. Go for something that resonates with you. Don't try to keep forcing even the word non-dual, you know, it's like, you know, you don't have to fit into a philosophy. You just have to give yourself over to what really resonates. I think that's part of why that um, scent of a woman came in, because I think the Pacino character in that is pretty blunt and blunt. uncompromising, direct. A little bitter. Yeah, he's got a little he's, bit of bitter. Blunt, but that he's at a point where he can't just afford just to cover and be nice and you know, keep some kind of a self concept going. Mm -hmm. And then there's some bitterness. Of a yeah. Little, like, a tinge. But the bitterness is getting washed out. Yeah, yeah. So the yeah. bluntness is a good so thing. The bluntness is just more of like, like true boldness. It's just, man, it's just like, it's just like can't. Yeah. That's how we all seem to end up. She came in talking about scent of a woman, Al Pacino, then it kind of shifted over to natural woman, Al Pacino. <laughs> we just kind of followed the breadcrumbs. Right. Oh, we, could, we couldn't, we don't have scent of a woman. And so I was like, oh, we don't have scent of a woman, we don't have the other movie. Then my friend she, Shia just said, here is a Dropbox song for you, David, and so she sent me, I said, what's this? And I tried to download it, and I clicked, and it finally downloaded. Natural Woman was the song mm -hmm. that I got sent today. I said, I think that's a sign <laughs> we're supposed to watch. What's this movie? Like, just all of life, just let it drop in. Follow what resonates, follow what resonates, and let it drop in, let it make itself obvious. It's so different from the idea of having to plan out a future, plan how it's supposed to go, how it's going to work out, you know, that's why our old programming was all plan, plan, plan. I even have a five-year degree in planning. I went to the university for five years to get a degree in planning and then Jesus just laughed like, ah, okay now you won't ever use that. But it's, yeah, it's whatever it takes to just come back to simplicity. Follow what resonates, let it be given. And it's amazing to think it's all about healing in the mind and clearing the emotions. It doesn't have anything really to do with producing anything or achieving anything in the world, or accomplishing anything in the world. It's like a skit, it's a stage. It's a stage for staging, and the staging that's going on is healing in the mind. Mm. That's what's happening, that's all that seems to be there, that's all that is, you could say, tangible. Everything else seems so important in the world. Did you get it? Is it finished? Was it good? Did you succeed? Who cares? That's all <laughs> intangible. All those things are intangible. They don't have any tangibility, any essence, any substance. Are you happy? Are you peaceful? Are you joyful? Are you free? Tangible. That's essential. That's tangible. It's just, yeah, it's amazing. Totally amazing. We had that a few
few years ago when Justin was here and they had that um, all those protests that were spreading mm -hmm. all Occupy. around Occupy yeah. and Lisa and Justin went down and filmed, made a little movie out of it and then it got nominated or was accepted into Sundance and everyone was, oh! And then because of some technicalities it was subsequently rejected from Sundance and was, oh! You know, it's, the, the spirit's <laughs> just like, did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it yet? You know, it's not about, you know, anything coming out good or right or bad or wrong, but the Spirit's been very gracious about, did you get it? Did you get it? With these movies, with everything. Well, thank you all. Thank you. It was, thank you. It was, it was great. It was really good. Good kick out of the room.